Hello, everyone. Welcome to Aquinox Office Hours. My name is Jae Hyun Nam. I'm a principal scientist at Aquinox and the inventor of Kagamer. I have studied a wide range of the security issues in today's cloud and edge computing systems, such as software defined networking, network function virtualization, Internet of Things, hypervisors, containers, and designed their security solutions over 10 years. And these days, all my focus is on cloud runtime security. Okay, today's main topic is how Kubernetes provides runtime protection for our cloud workloads. And here is the agenda. I'm going to first talk about why we need to have runtime security and what challenges there are when we implement this. Then I will introduce how Kubernetes provides runtime protection by telling a story about how we solve the challenges. Okay. Nowadays, we all know that lots of legacy solutions are moving to cloud. And most of the applications and services we are using today are running on cloud environments. However, we also realized that even small cracks in virtual machines and containers can produce huge and destructive impacts on cloud environments because virtual machines share the same physical resources and containers share the same host resources. For example, when a container is compromised, an attacker can conduct a container escape attack and run a local exploit to get the root privilege of a host system. Of course, it's not that easy, but this is still a possible scenario in real world. So it is quite important to properly monitor and restrict the behavior of cloud workloads in runtime to protect our specific asset and even cloud environments. Then, how can we achieve runtime protection for virtual machines and containers? There have been several approaches to protect cloud resources over time. First, when we mostly focused on virtual machines, we could modify hypervisors to add some secret features for virtual machines. By doing this, we could monitor the behavior of virtual machines at the hypervisor side. However, it created a significant performance impact and it could not be deployed in public clouds due to the limited control of the infrastructures. Second, these days, we can modify container platforms to add a new security layer between containers and a whole system. For this, we can replace some dynamic libraries used by containerized applications to security enhanced libraries and control the behavior of those applications. However, it is still possible that an attacker may use static binaries or evade those libraries. Lastly, we can directly use existing security features given by the whole system. In this case, we don't need to modify anything in our environments and we can directly use, we can directly monitor and restrict the behavior of cloud applications inside virtual machines or the host system where containers are running. Of course, there could be some side effects, but compared to first two options, this option is much feasible in today's cloud environments. So Kubernetes first follows this approach. Then definitely we know that 
all the security enforcement should be conducted inside of the kernel, not the user space. But now we have to choose either using custom kernel modules or Linux security modules for workload protection. If we use custom kernel modules, we might be able to have any features that we want, but our solutions might be too dependent on given kernels. On the other hand, if we use the Linux security modules, we may not need to depend on kernels because LSMs are mostly provided by default in today's Linux distributions. So we decided to use Linux security modules rather than building new kernel modules for security enforcement. After that, we were facing some other challenges. First, it is so difficult to use Linux security modules because it requires lots of backgrounds about how whole systems and LSMs work. For this reason, many people hesitate to use LSMs. Second, today, there is no automated system for security policy enforcement. For example, in Kubernetes, we can switch by Avon profiles in pod configurations. However, it does not mean that those profiles are automatically applied during pod creations, during container creations. What I mean is, for policy enforcement, we need to manually create M1 profiles and load them in each node because we don't know where a pod will be deployed. It is totally up to Kubernetes scheduler. Then whenever we need to update the profiles, we should edit and reload the profiles in all nodes again and again. Lastly, the most critical challenge is that the metadata for cloud workloads is just user-defined metadata, which means that host systems do not know about cloud workloads. For example, in Kubernetes, even though we restrict some behavior of containers with Avon profiles, we cannot get the alerts about which container causes what kinds of policy violations. So to implement the runtime security while solving the problems, we designed a new runtime security enforcement system, which is KubeAmmer. First, KubeAmmer restricts the behavior of cloud applications in virtual machines and containers at the system level. Then, Kubernetes provides is to use policy specifications to users while it handles all the complexities in LSMs by itself. Third, Kubernetes becomes an automated system for security policy enforcement by directly controlling LSMs. Finally, KubeAmmer becomes a, a login system that correlates system metadata with workload metadata and generate alerts and system logs for cloud workloads. This is the overall architecture of KubeAmmer. KubeAmmer currently supports three kinds of cloud environments, Kubernetes, a cluster of virtual machines, and a self-managed virtual machine. For this, it has multiple platform handlers corresponding to each environment. Then Kubernetes also supports two types of Linux security modules, AppArmor and SLinux. These components convert given security policies to some forms that AppArmor and SLinux systems can understand for security enforcement. 
then the system monitor collects the result of security enforcement by using eBPF, extended buckled packet filter. Finally, the logger generates alerts and system logs based on the collected information by the system monitor and the platform handlers. Okay, now let me talk about how Kubernetes serves the challenges through its components. First, we need to restrict the behavior of cloud applications in virtual machines and containers. And Linux security modules are designed for mandatory access control. So we use LSMs for security enforcement. Today, there are several LSMs in Linux systems, such as AppArmor, as Linux, Smack, and Tomoyo. But most of Linux distributions supports either AppArmor or as Linux. So we target these two LSMs for security enforcement. Then how does Kubernetes use those LSMs? Let's see it now. First, AppArmor provides file-based access control, which means that we create a secret profile for a process and the secret profile contains the files that the process can access or can access. And based on the secret profile, AppArmor restricts the behavior of a process. This is the base concept of AppArmor. Here, we have a stamp policy and we want to block the execution of bin ls by bin dash. Then, when Kubernetes AppArmor enforcer receives this policy, it internally converts the policy to a security profile for AppArmor like this. Here, a user does not need to know a deep knowledge about AppArmor and a host system. A user just needs to know our policy specifications. Then the AppArmor enforcer applies the generated profile into the AppArmor system and then bin dash can execute bin ls due to our secret policy. Here, I'd like to point to one important thing. A user does not need to understand AppArmor and a whole system. However, a user should know how a cloud application works. For example, here we have a cloud app and it accesses app the config file. It internally works two processes, then discharge processes to some other tasks. In this example, who accesses app the config? Yeah, cloud app. Then who creates a TCP connection? Double get, not the cloud app. Who accesses ETC password? PS, not the cloud app. I think you got my point. When we define a secret policy, we need to understand the behavior of a cloud application correctly. Otherwise, Kubernetes may work differently. Let's say that we want to block the TCP connection in this example. And we define a security policy that the cloud app should not create a TCP connection. Is this a right permission, right, right policy? No. This is a wrong policy. We need to define a security policy that double get should not create 
ATSP connection. This is the right policy. Okay, let's get back to the subject. Then how about S Linux? S Linux provides lab-based access control. So we need to define the allowed operations between two security labels, which are also known as security rules, and update the labels of actual files to enforce the security rules. Here, we have the same policy. Unlike Abermer, SLNX doesn't have something similar to a secret profile. So for consistency, Kubernetes SLNX enforcer first generates a Kubernetes secret profile. Then this profile contains a source path with a source label and a target path with a target label. Then Kubernetes SLNX updater first checks if the given labels exist in the whole system. If not, it creates a new SLNX module for those labels, then installs it in the whole system. Once the SLNX module is ready, the updater changes the labels of a source and a destination and a target with the given labels. Then bin dash can execute bin ls. By the way, this SLNX enforcer is still a prototype and we are planning to release this soon. Okay, by using AppArmor and SLNX, we can now restrict the behavior of cloud applications. Then what do we need more? Yeah, we need to get alerts when some policy violations occur. For this, we can simply use Linux audit system. However, as you can see this loop, this loop is a audit loop given by the Linux audit system. And this base, as you can see this, lo this loop, audit loops have no information about cloud workloads. It just contains PID, user ID, some command, some operation, target, but there is no information about namespace, pod, or container. In addition, audit logs do not contain the full path of a source and a target. Here you can see dot slash password, which is a relative path. We have cat, which is just process name. We don't have the full path of cat. We don't have the full path of password. I mean the absolute path. Then how can we get the full information, including the metadata for cloud workloads and the full path of a source? and a target. For this, Kubernetes utilizes eBPF instead of the Linux audit system. In particular, Kubernetes restricts the process executions, file accesses, and network operations of virtual machines and containers. Thus, it basically monitors these system calls for such operations. In addition, it monitors two other LSM hooks to get the full path of a binary or a file. Now, let's take a look at this more with examples. Here is the example of how Kubernetes collects system metadata. 
When we simply will love ls, we will just get ls from a system event. Why? As you can see the definition of exv, the argument just contain the path name, not an absolute path. That is why Kubama monitors to additional LSM hooks to get the full path of a source and a target. So here, as you can see, we can get the full path of source and a target. Similar to process execution, the system monitor watches the system events for file accesses while getting the full path of a file through the security file open hook. Here, if we execute cat release, cat OS release in the etc directory, as you can see, we can get the system events for the file access and the full path is of a source and a target file. Now we have all information required to generate alerts and system logs. As the final step, the logger generates alerts and system logs based on the collected information from the system monitor and the platform handler. Here, the platform handler maintains container and endpoint maps that contain the metadata for cloud workloads. Then when the system monitor receives these events, the logger first creates a logo template with a source and a resource, which is the target and the result, which is kind of the past or permission denied operation is not permitted, something like that. Then the logger looks up a container from the container map based on the PID and mount name space names in the, in the event. Then it searches a list of security policies from the endpoint map with the namespace name and pod name. Then it finds a policy matched to the given event. Then it fills the bounded information in the log. Here, what is the difference between alerts and logs? If it finds a matched policy, the log becomes an alert. Otherwise, the log is just a system log. Okay, today we look through why we need Kubeammer for runtime protection and how Kubeammer implements security enforcement by using LSMs and observability by using eBPF. I hope this talk helps you understand Kubeammer better. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you.